All right, I'm going to talk about the Dirac Delta function today. But with that in mind, let me remind you a result from calculus. So, suppose this is my x axis, and I'm going to graph a function f of x. And I pick any two points. I'm just going to call it A and B. I could pick it on you know, uh, the positive side or the negative side, or one here, one there. It doesn't matter. This is easier for me to draw. And, and I look at a function between a continuous function. And I'm just making it look just different. That's all. And what I'm going to do is compute the integral of this function. So it will be written as a to b f of x dx. If you notice, this function has uh, two uh, interesting points. It has a maximum and minimum. Correct? Uh, and I'm going to label this as F max and F min. Now, it, the integral has a physical meaning, if you will. It's the area under the curve. So it is this area. So what I'm going to do, and I hope I can replicate this one more time, and let's say A and B. This time, I'm going to bring this over here and look at this graph. And this area, the area of this rectangle is A to B F min, the minimum value times Tx. It's simply a number, minimum value. But nonetheless, I can still write it this way. Immediately, what can I tell? Because every value of x, uh, f is greater than that value, so the area is going to be higher. We have, what will the third diagram look like? Remember, this is just a constant. It's a number. So is this. I can, if it's a constant, I can pull it out of the integral. Correct? I get f min times b minus a. That's the integral of dx. Less than or equal to a to b dx less than or equal to oh, f min and f max times b minus a. This is a result we will need. It's very intuitive, but it's, I thought it's much easier if I pres present this ahead of time. Clear? Yeah? Good. Keep that 
in your cache. Object. But I think as I've alluded before, this is not a function at all. But we learn to use it, enjoy it. So I'm going to create a se sequence of functions, an infinite sequence of functions. Lambda one, this function is going to have two arguments. Um, it's going to, it'll be a function of x, but this is also a parameter. Okay, so what's that parameter? I'm going to pick x zero. Some point, any point, I'm free to do this. Then, I'm going to pick two sides, x0 minus um, L over 2, and then x0 plus L over 2. Uh, I go L over 2 on this side, we go L over 2 on that side. Well, that's fine. All I've done is really define an interval. I've not defined a function. Now, I will pick a function that is 0 here, all the way here, 0. And so look, maybe I should do it this way. And then I'm going to pick the number L, whatever the L is. L is a fixed value. And It's either here or there, but I'm just making it look like a rectangle. This is, this is not the graph of a function. For, for every x, I should give a unique y. But may, maybe I can, if you want, even take this side off and say, this is the graph of lambda. OK? I want you to notice a few things. First of all, how do I define uh, the graph of equal to L if x belongs to, I can put closed interval, it doesn't have to, equal to 0, otherwise. It's a good definition for L. What I said was, I didn't say I'm going to define one function, but I'm going to define a sequence of functions. How many? Infinitely many functions. Okay. But before I do that, I want to show you some of the properties of lambda. First of all, I can restrict the domain. Because lambda is 0 outside of that. One over. No, 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 I don't want 
don't want that. This is L units long. Yep, yep, one over L. One over. Now what's the integral going to be? One. Yep. Right? just pull this out because it's 1 over L. And this interval is L units long. Okay. And now, I just showed you the very first one. I'm going to define lambda n x over x0. I mean x comma x0. I put lambda 1 over here. This is for every n. So n equals 1, 2, infinitely many. So what's the f graph and how do I write it down? So again, I have my x0, but I'm going to make my width narrower. And I'm going to call this x0 minus L over 2 n and x0 plus l over 2n. So now what's the width of my domain? Not l over 2 anymore. Uh, first of all, it's not l over 2. The distance from here to here is l, right? Plus l over 2, another l over 2. It's l. So it's l, but it's not quite l. What's the width? L over n. It's, as n, n increases, the width becomes narrower and narrower. But I want the integral to be 1. So how tall do I make uh, my function? Again, the function is going to be 0 for these values. I'm going to make it one, no, no. I want, do I want the, the height to get taller or lesser? Bigger. So, and first of all, let me draw it like this. And that's one over L. I'll make this N over L. So, lambda N X x0 equals n over l when x belongs to x over l. Well, well, let me write this down. Zero. And the integral of ln x x0 dx from uh, minus infinity to infinity. Again, my domain has become much smaller that I'm going to integrate over. This is almost 0 uh, in a, in a, it, it, it is 0 in a very large uh, part of the number line except for And here the value is n over l dx. Once again, we get n over l times l over n equals 1. So, Let me show you.
show you the graphs of all L's, I mean, all lambdas. The first one looks like this. The next one Yeah, looks like that. Eventually, it's becoming zero everywhere on the real line except that x zero. And at x zero, what is happening? The height of the sky skyscraper, if you want is going all the way to infinity. Yeah? Yeah. Is this just an N over L? Yes. This is N over L. This one? Oh, oh, oh right, right, right. Yeah, yep, 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 thank you. Yeah? So it's a weird function. This is functionally what is it doing? It's becoming as n goes to infinity, well, a lambda becomes zero everywhere except at x zero. And at x zero, its value is going to infinity. That's not a good function, is it? No. But now, Let's look at what it does. OK, in case you're wondering why uh, I have a different shirt on in the middle of a video. Uh, when I gave this lecture in class um, two days ago, my final argument for the Dirac delta function was not on point. Uh, there was a little bit of a clutter uh, in my uh, presentation, so I have edited the video and inserted this part so as to clean up uh, the argument. So, and this is two days later, so this is a little bit of uh, time travel, if you will. Okay, with that said, I want to go back um, and combine two ideas we talked about before. One is, of, of course, the domain for lambda n, which is this guy. And the initial domain that we talked about for a generic function in terms of maxima and minima, and I used uh, the letters A and B. And for large enough n, so in case you cannot see, this is the point x0, this is x0 minus L over 2n, and x0 plus L over 2n, and this is uh, the domain where lambda n x x0 is non-zero. Okay? So when we integrate lambda, this is effectively the domain uh, that we'll be integrating over. So we talked about f having a maxima and a minima for, for any continuous functions, a function f, and we'll only use continuous function. So for, for example, between the domain A and B, just looking at the diagram, this is the minimum, and which we previously called f minimum, and this, if you will, is the maximum. Okay, fine. But we're going to integrate, so this is what we'll effectively need. We're uh, looking for minus infinity to infinity f of x, lambda n x, x zero dx. This is the quantity we're going to integrate, and this lambda is only non-zero between these two domains. So what I really care about is the value, the maximum and minimum value of f between these two points. As you can see, um, in this case, let me try to get a different color perhaps. Um, the maximum, so between this domain, 
this is going to be my new f minimum, which I'm going to write as f with the lowercase m, right? But depends on lambda n, this domain depends on n. So to make that clear, I'm going to put an n over here. And maximum, so somewhere over here, there is a maximum. So here I'm going to put f and uppercase m and n. Okay, so let me define that. F m n is the minimum of f of x in the domain x0 minus l over 2n and x0 plus l over 2n and fm n is the maximum Off, all the way through the same. The point to note is as n becomes bigger and bigger, this becomes smaller and smaller. So if I pick a much larger n, we're talking about this domain. So then the maximum is somewhere here and here. Then we pick a smaller domain. The maximum is somewhere here and here. And as n goes to zero, this is the only choice we have left. What am I trying to say? I'm saying limit as n approach infinity, fn, fm of n is nothing more than f of x0. See, the, the minimum as the domain becomes smaller and smaller just goes to here. Same thing with the this is how the minimum goes in this diagram, and this is how the maximum grows, goes. So similarly, the maximum, uppercase, n is equal to f of x0. So this is the, the, the terms we will need to compute this integral in the limit as n goes to infinity. So now, let's actually do that. So I need, and you can almost tell that I'm leaving some space here. Now I'm going to use the maximum value of f in the domain of lambda, where lambda is actually, domain of lambda where lambda is uh, non-zero, but where it's non-zero, it's a fixed number. Okay? So this becomes, I'm going to buy, bound, bound it by its maximum value, f m uppercase n, lambda x x0 dx and I, I, I can do minus infinity to infinity it really doesn't matter but lambda is only zero non-zero between uh, x0 plus L over 2n and x0 minus L over 2n and the value of lambda here is equal to n over l in, in this domain. Okay, fine. And bounded here by, but the lowercase, so lowercase m, n, lambda n, x minus l, no, x, x zero, dx. But these two guys are just numbers. 
So I can pull it out of the integral, and when I pull it out of the integral, I get f m n Again, I'm going to bring this constant out. But the lambdas were designed so that these two integrals are precisely one. So we get, so this is one, and that is one. So what's left is fm, lowercase m, n, which is less than or equal to uh, well let me let me leave a little space again leaving a little space uh, the big difference I don't know if you can tell by my handwriting, so I'm just going to say it out. This is lowercase m, the minimum in the domain. This is uppercase m, the maximum in the domain. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let n go to infinity. So limit n goes to infinity. Well, we have to do that. The left hand side and right hand side, we had done the limit before. This is nothing more than f of zero. And this two, so let me squish this in. This is also f of zero. So then we have that f of zero is oh, not f of zero, but rather the function. Oh, let me, sorry. x zero. Okay. So then I have f of x zero less than or equal to. less than or equal to this, and, and this is greater than or equal to f0, and it's the same number, we have the following. trouble, but a fancy result. If I take the, any, any continuous function f and integrate it with these lambda and let n go to infinity, the whole thing just picks out the value of f at x0. So it's a, it's a very powerful object. So what Dirac wanted to do was the following. So he wanted to create a new object that does this. And he called it 
the delta function. Right? And what he wanted to do was this delta function, when integrated with f, is just to pick out the value at x0. And that's the point where x minus x0 goes to 0, or when x is equal to x0. This is what he wanted to do. But he knows that this can be done by not one function, but rather an infinite sequence of functions. Yeah? So this is the defining property of the Dirac delta function. It can be done by this sort of a construction because we know this gives that. So look at this. f of x appears on this side. It appears on this side. dx appears on this side. dx appears on that side. Integral appears on this side. Integral appears on that side. Now what is different about the two sides? On the left hand side, obviously, there is the delta function. On the right hand side, there is this guy and this guy. So we can think of the delta function. This is true. The next statement, what I'm going to write, is not strictly true, but we can intuit if such a function exists, it should be, so I'm just going to write the boxes. Strictly speaking, this is not true. It is true only in this sense. Only if you put an integral and multiply it with a function and integrate. Okay? But with that understanding, you see a powerful object that does this. Now as n goes to infinity, lambda n goes to you know, these, these little graphs become narrower and nar narrower to a point, as n goes to infinity, it's just zero all the way. And over here, the value of the delta function is undefined. So look at this. Delta x minus x zero is equal to zero if x not equal to x0 and is undefined when x is equal to x0. I think this will take us to where we were on Wednesday, so I'm going to insert back the other video in. What is that equal to? One. Integral of every lambda is one. Well, that makes sense because it's like the function of one. Um,
all I have to do is integrate along any domain that includes x0. I don't care if I integrate all the way to infinity. Because far enough away, it is 0. You know, so I guess I should say for any delta 1 and delta 2 greater than 0. But these are not the most important things that we wanted. Thank <laughs> you. 